-hmm. I was born in far north Queensland on the Atherton Tablelands. I had a father who was well passionately interested in nature. He had a passion about flowers and, and the forest and the, the value of, of forest trees. And although not religious, he was really quite spiritual. And uh, I can remember as a small child, he, he used to call me Bub. And he'd say, Bub, just put your arms around this tree. And so we put our arms around a tree. And he said, that's where the world is. And I've never forgotten that. I uh, started at Monash University and did my PhD there uh, with a fantastic uh, uh, professor of mycology. So this is fungal taxonomy and plant pathology. So I got all of my credible academic knowledge through the botany department at Monash University. I found very quickly when I was looking for work that funding for straight taxonomy wasn't available. But if you linked it to plant pathology, which was an applied usability of the research, then there was funding available. And that was how I got involved with the wine industry. Today, uh, in just about any industry, there are biologicals that will take the conventional chemicals, certainly the herbicides and fungicides, out of the system. Also, we know that if one starts to farm the soil, rather than mine the soil, which is what conventional agriculture does. You end up with dead soil, which dead soil is dirt, because uh, sand, silt and clay is dirt. It's not soil until you put biological activity into it. The high use of the NPK and urea and the things like that, they actually do knock down and in some cases kill the microbiology. So you are creating a situation where you're growing plants in dirt with some chemistry in it, no biology. The other thing that is really important to understand is that it's the biology that makes chemistry plant available. Our most valuable resource on this planet, and there isn't any more, there will never be any more, is our soil. If you've got a nutrient dense pasture, the animals eat less because they're satisfied and they've got you know, good, healthy guts. The same thing with us. If we eat nutrient-dense food that's produced and eaten close to where it's produced, then our gut biome is happy, it's healthy. The fungal biomass will take up and hold more carbon than do the humates. So if you've got an extremely active fungal biomass in the soil, you're doing a whole lot of things. Uh, you're holding soil structure, uh, you're holding moisture, you're sequestering and holding a carbon very efficiently. As farmers, we control only what we can input and do up to the farm gate. Once we get to the farm gate, we're at the mercy of the big supermarkets and anybody else who wants to screw a farmer. We have to minimise the inputs. The inputs that we do use have to, be, have to be used to their maximum ability. Now, for a farmer, if they're not secure in going to a full biological system, then let's take out the most toxic, the most offensive of the chemicals, and we start that journey, because it is a journey. I find it very humbling that we can take a piece of land and allow nature to go back and make it the best it can be by simply standing there and saying, what do you want me to do? You know, I'll put some compost tea out. I'll, put, I'll, put some, I'll give you some simple sugars to eat. I'll put some molasses out. Some, what do you want? Not what do I want from you, what do you want? Because as soon as I give you what you want, you'll give me everything I need. There's a term that's out is, is, is paddock to plate. And the paddock to plate has to be as short as possible if we're going to have nutritious food. And so you don't need to keep producing more food, you need to produce better food 
on the area that we have now. We can't afford to keep cutting down forests. We can't afford to keep throwing on chemicals. We have to look at the value of the food, not the quantity of the food. I feel like our generation has to be the generation of regeneration. We really do. And you have to be proactive. Yes. Yeah. Um. You know, some of us are trying, but we're running <laughs> we're running out of time, unfortunately. We have to get rid of our arrogance. We have to get rid of our egos. We have to accept that we have been here for a blink of time. And Mother Nature will outlive us. And she will repair the damage that we done, we've done. But if we want to say we deserve to be here, at the moment I don't believe we do. We have done too much destruction. If we then say we are simply an animal in time, in Mother Earth's time, wouldn't it be wonderful to say that each one of us, as we leave the Earth, we can say we've actually tried to do something positive? It's a little bit like a grain of sand. If you get enough grains of sand, you've got a beach. So if we get a beach of people all doing the right thing, We'll, we'll gradually get rid of these people who are doing the wrong thing. I've had a good life. I guess my only regret is that I probably won't see an organic biological agricultural system as the, as the majority. But yeah, I, 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 hope I, have, I hope I have a role in, in, in making that happen. One little part, one grain of sand. <laughs>